Okay. Let's see if we're live now. Maybe. Uh-huh. Oh, there we go. All right. Well, this video started. I don't know about any other videos that have made today. They have all disappeared. I am not sure what happened to them. So what I will probably do is do this video and then see what happens to it. And if something doesn't work, like with the other two, then I will make one big video over in Ridge Kids and Karen can share it with our regular Ridge page and then with our YouTube because the two videos that I made earlier today seem to still be live somewhere, but I don't know where because I can't find them. It's peculiar. But anyways. All right. So let's recap where we've been and where we need to go. So earlier today, we started our morning around 10 o'clock and we started it with the Last Supper. And that is where Jesus had his last meal with his best friends. And he introduced them to communion. Hi, Alex. The very first communion and they he broke the bread and said this was my body and broke and poured the wine and said this is my blood and do this in as often um in remembrance of me so he we talked about the first communion and then when supper was over we also talked about how jesus washed the feet of the disciples and and the feet were always very dirty because they wore sandals and that was a dirty job. And if Jesus was willing to do that job, then we should be willing to do the dirty jobs to help others as well. So we've covered a lot of things so far. And then once supper was over and the feet were washed, they left the man's house where they were having their meal and they started to walk towards Mount Olives. And on the way, Jesus and Peter and John and James went to Gethsemane for for Jesus to pray. And Jesus was praying to God because he was sad and he knew what was coming. And he thought, well, doesn't hurt to ask. Maybe he'll change his mind. But he knew that God was not going to change the plan that he's already put forth. So Jesus prayed to him. And when he went to check on the disciples, who he asked to pray with him as well, yep, they were asleep. Not once, not twice. Three times Jesus went to talk to them and check on them and they had fallen asleep. And that really hurts Jesus' feelings. He was very sad that they did not stay vigilant and stay awake and pray with him like he asked them to. And we talked about how sometimes we feel disappointed when we ask people to help us and hello everybody and they don't help us or maybe we've been somebody who's been asked to help and we haven't been the greatest helpers. So there's lots of lessons that we can learn from, from the things that happen on Monday, Thursday. So now, where are we at? Oh yes, so now Jesus and James and John and Peter are all leaving and heading out. And as they're leaving, Jesus looks at them and says, here comes the one that's going to betray me. Can you guess who's coming his way? I know, do you know? It is, yes, that's right, that's Judas. Judas is on his way to see Jesus. Now, earlier, I found out that I didn't know this. I found out that Judas had been talking to the high priest. You remember, where are they? Oh, you remember the two that paid him the 30 pieces of silver to betray Jesus? He was talking to them. And do you know what he told them? He said that he was going to kiss the cheek of Jesus so they would know which man he was. Now, back in the day of Jesus's time, that's how they would greet one another. They would hug or they would kiss their cheeks as a sign of, of friendship. Well, if Judas is going to kiss Jesus's cheek, isn't that a sign of friendship? For Judas, it wasn't a sign of friendship. It was a sign of betrayal. Because that's how the high priests were going to know who they're supposed to arrest. Yep, that's what's happening. So here comes Judas and the high priests and the guards. When Judas gets over by Jesus, he gives him a kiss on his cheek. 
And here come the guards and they arrest Jesus. They put him, they, they put his, they tie his hands together. And you know, Jesus doesn't say a word. He doesn't say one word. He doesn't say, what did I do? How come you're arresting me? Nothing. Well, Peter, Peter is so mad. He takes out his sword and he cuts one of the men who's arresting Jesus. And Jesus said, no, no, we're not going to do that because this is the way it's supposed to be. Well, Peter was very upset. Now, remember, Jesus told Peter that he was going to deny him three times before the end of the day. So now Peter's trying to show Jesus that he's protecting him because he wouldn't deny him because that's his best friend. So when they came up to Jesus and they arrested him and they started asking him questions about who he was, Jesus said nothing. He didn't have to say who he was. He knows who he is. They know who he is and they are afraid of him. So they're arresting him for no reason at all. He didn't do anything wrong. Nothing. I was shocked. I was reading this the other day and I was very distressed by this. So now Jesus is going with the guards. And Judas followed through on exactly what he said he was going to do. He betrayed Jesus. Even though during the Last Supper, remember, he said that he would never do anything to bring harm to Jesus. But that's exactly what he did. He turned his back on his best friend. Have you ever had somebody turn their back on you? Do you have a best friend? Would you turn your back on your best friend? I bet you wouldn't. I bet you know a lot of great people, and I know that you could probably make a list of all of the wonderful things that makes your best friend your best friend. I know I can make a list about my best friends and why they're so special to me. So I can't even imagine how Judas could say that Jesus was his best friend and then turn on him like that. So what happened to Peter? Well, let me just tell you, I know exactly what happened to Peter. So now the guards are taking Jesus away. They're, he's 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 going with them because that's what has to happen. And Jesus is and Peter is following behind the guards and he's wants to he's very fearful. He's not sure what he should do now. He's afraid for himself. Are they going to arrest him because he's Jesus's friend? All the other disciples are gone. It's just Peter. So Peter's sitting in a courtyard. And that's kind of an outside space between buildings. And he's sitting there and a, a young shepherd girl comes up to her and says, um, um, hey, you were also with Jesus, weren't you? Guess what Peter said? Want to know? He said, I do not know what you were talking about. <gasps> that was once. He denied that he knew Jesus. So then Peter got up and walked and he went and sat someplace else. And another girl came up to him and said, surely this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. And Peter said, I, I don't know him. I don't know that man. That's too. And then a whole little bit while later, Peter was sitting there and a group of people came up to him and they said that they were certain, certain that Peter was a part of Jesus's disciples, that he was one of them. And do you know what Peter did? He actually cursed. Mm -hmm. He did. He cursed. And he swore on an oath and said, I do not know this man. And then you know what happened? <laughs> yep. As soon as he finished saying that, the rooster crowed just like Jesus said it would. He denied Jesus three times and he swore that he would never do that because Jesus was his best friend. Well, when he realized what he had done, Peter started to cry. He felt awful. 
that he did that to Jesus. He couldn't believe that he would ever turn his back on his best friend. And he cried and he cried and he cried. Now, don't worry. Peter does go on to do fabulous things for Jesus. And Jesus forgives him, just like Jesus forgives us when we make mistakes. But he cried. He was really sad. He just felt, he felt so bad because Jesus was his best friend. Have you ever hurt your best friend? Have you ever said things that you didn't really mean and then you felt bad? Does your best friend forgive you? Mm, sometimes it's kind of hard. Think about when somebody hurts your feelings. It's kind of hard to forgive, isn't it? Yeah. But we're really supposed to because Jesus forgives all of us every time we make a mistake and every time we tell him we're sorry for what we've done. He forgives us. He says, I understand. I still love you. And that's wonderful about Jesus. That's why he's so awesome, because no matter what we do wrong, he always forgives us, which I wish I could do that more. I bet you probably sometimes have a hard time forgiving, too. So we should work on that. That's that's what I think we should work on. So everything that that Jesus said was going to happen really did happen. All of it. Remember, he said somebody would betray him. And Judas did. He told Peter he would deny him three times, and he did. He knew exactly what was going to happen because that's what it says in the Bible. That's what it says in the Old Testament, that things had to come to, to fruition. They had to, these are the things that, that God told the prophets that was going to happen, that Jesus was going to come, and all of these things were going to happen during Holy Week. And that's exactly what happened. So now. So now we've come to the end of Holy Thursday. Jesus has been arrested and the guards have taken him away. Peter is sad because he tried, he denied knowing Jesus. Judas has now realized what he has done and tried to give the money back to the priests because he felt so guilty about what he had done. And he's hoping to get forgiveness as well. But what's done is done, and now Jesus has been arrested. That's a long day for Jesus. This was a hard day for him. But he just he just kept doing what he was supposed to do because he knew God had a plan for him, and he needed to follow what, what God had planned. And that's what we all need to do, especially during this time. We don't know what we're supposed to be doing. We don't know how we're supposed to keep going and being quarantined and having to stay home and not see our friends and family. But God has a plan for us. He always does. He never leaves us to do things on our own. He's always with us, right? Right right, right next to us. Remember, I've told you this many times, that if you stumble, he catches you. If you fall backwards, he catches you. And if you're walking along and you don't feel that you can walk anymore, he takes you by your elbow and says, come on, I'm right here with you. So you don't have anything to worry about. So now what I would like for you to do this afternoon or this evening is I would like for you older kids who already know how to write, I would like you to write a list of all of the things that make your best friend your best friend. So write your best friend's name at the top of a paper and write all of the great things that make this person your best friend. And then, and if you have more than one best friend, that's okay. You can make more than one list. You can have lots of best friends. You can make lots of lists. And then I encourage you to send those to your best friends because they may not even know how you really feel about them. They may not know why they're your best friend. And it might be nice for them to hear it, especially now when you can't really be with them. So I would, I would suggest, um, I would suggest you doing that. And for my little ones that aren't really good at writing yet, that's okay. You can draw a picture of your best friend and your mom and dad or your grandma or your aunt and uncle. They can help you write your best friend's name at the top of the paper. And you can draw a great picture for your best friend. You can draw your best friend or you can draw a pretty picture, whatever you want to do. And then you can mail it to that person too. And now for my adults who are watching, I encourage you as well to take some time to think about your closest friends and why they're your close friends and write them a letter. Let them know why they mean so much to you. A lot of times we just go through the days and, and just assume that people know 
how we feel about them. And we just assume that, well, they know that I love them. They know that they're my best friend. They know these things. I don't need to tell them. Well, you know, I think it would be a good thing for us to do because I'm sure there's been times in the past that we've hurt our best friends and we didn't realize it. Um, and I think it's a good time. It's a good opportunity for you to reach out to those people that, that mean so much to you and, and just let them know, Hey, you're, you know what, you're my best friend. And this is, this is why, this is why you're my best friend, or this is why you're my friend. I appreciate these, these characteristics in you or these qualities. Um, it's a good activity to do. It's, it's a, it's a good time to, to reach out to people. Um, so I hope I encourage you to do that. I encourage you all to, to take some time to, to thank your best friend for being the bestest that they are. My best friends know who they are and I appreciate them. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to be writing some lists of why my best friends are my best friends so I can send those out to them and let them know how much they mean to me. That was my wing for them. So I'm, I appreciate that all of you um, were here with me today throughout the day. I'm sorry that my other videos, I have no idea where they are. I look at them and it says I've been live for four hours. I'm, I don't know. I might be in like Saskatchewan or something. I'm not really sure because I'm not in Munster live anywhere. So I don't know what happened to him. But I will be back tomorrow at noon for a good Friday video. That video will probably be in Ridge Kids because Jared is going to be posting his video with the other pastors um, on the last seven words of Christ. And I highly suggest um, all of you take some time to, to watch that video. Um, if you're not busy at noon, after we post it on Ridge Kids, then we will post it up on the Ridge Church page. All my little ones, I am hoping that you have finished your butterflies because tomorrow I will be coming around to everybody's house. I have something special for all of you. So I will be dropping those things off. And if you could please put your butterflies on your front door, that would be very helpful. Um, and I can take the butterflies for worship. And then I will leave you a special treat on your front porch as well. And then I'll knock and then you can wave to me and blow me kisses because I miss you guys. So from 10 to 12 tomorrow morning, I will be going to Lansing, to Hammond, and into Munster. And then at one o'clock, I will leave Ridge and head out to Dyer, Cherville, St. John, all of the other places that I need to go um, to make sure that all of my Sunday schoolers get their special treats. So please, if you have not finished your butterflies, get those finished so that we can use them for worship on Sunday. And I think, I think we've covered everything. I think we did a good job today. It's been a long day and I've had fun making these videos and hoping to keep you entertained and sharing new information that maybe you learned something today that you didn't really know about things that happen on, on Monday, Thursday. So I hope you enjoyed the videos and the skits and the crazy technology that we're working with. <laughs> it's a learning curve, right? Exactly. So let's pray. Gracious God, you call us out of our comfort and our safety to embrace this journey and challenge us to take a risk. Jesus has called us to serve the people we meet while we're on this journey. And the Holy Spirit is the one that provides the safety during the journey and helps us to be hospitable to new people. Lord, we ask you to continue to guide us on this journey, for we don't know what's coming, but you do. Help us to be more like Jesus. Help us to trust you more than anything in this whole world, because if anybody has our best interest at heart, it's you. Lord, you care for us and you love us, and we are so blessed to be your children. Thank you for all that you do for us and continue to be with us. Amen. All right. So you got my phone's blowing up over here. I'm trying to pray. I hope that you have a great evening and that you continue to enjoy the sunshine, even though it seems like it's a little cold outside. Finish your projects and send me pictures of all of the things that you're doing and let me know that you're doing well. I will try to reach out to most of you tomorrow morning and make sure that everybody will be home. 
Of course, you're going to be home. Where are you going to be? We have to stay home. Make sure so I can pick up your butterflies and drop off your gifts for you. And I hope everybody has a great night. And I will see you tomorrow. I love you guys. Take care. Bye.